So then, second branch of the noble of the therapy is realistic intention or motivation, some kalpa. Again, that's again theoretical. It's conceptual. Some kalpa means even totally conceptual, because it's not like intention, like a mm feeling, because the mm feeling is I just want to go have some more mangoes. You know, I want to be the king. I want to be president. I want to be a billionaire. You know, I want. I want. That's the gut feeling. That's the gut motivation of the animal instinct or eros. Or I want to get rid of such and such eros and thanatos, right? Polymorphous perversity and murderous aggression, the, and the, the, which are the result of the fundamental delusion of the self, of the absolute self. So. Realistic motivation is conceptual in the sense that I reason that everything is causal. I recognize that I have this space of uncontrolled, uncaused thing that I can't control. And so my motivation is I'm going to gain control over that. I'm going to learn about that. I'm going to become conscious of that unconscious. I'm going to experience it, be aware of it, be attentive to it, find out if it really has to control me, or if there's a place from which I can control it or not. But that's going to be my motivation. That's the primary thing that I can do in relation to the, the way of inter all these interactions with this world that is overwhelming to me. So that is where the mind, you know, everything depends upon the mind, that whole Dhammapada world comes from it, this intention to find out the real root of either suffering or maybe freedom from suffering. Because, you know, although someone gave you such a prognosis, the doctor, you don't know if he's correct, his analysis, yourself, right away. And actually, you subliminally don't necessarily think it's that correct. You don't think the way you feel about yourself is a delusion causing your suffering. You don't necessarily think that. But you're sort of taking, well, he's a doctor, and I am depressed, anxious, and addicted. So I'm going to maybe, okay, I'll try it out. And you get a motivation, I'm going to try it out. And then the next few things have to do with well, who are you that you're going to try it out? How, what is your engagement in the causal process? Do you, that, that it gives you the ability to try it out. And the first thing you realize is that you are engaged in society as part of your causal process. And maybe you're not engaged with it in the most supportive way to for what you've become motivated to try to do, which is to discover your reality. So the next is realistic speech. Why is that important right away? Because speech is where you join a causal mind of the collective, where you, you think in terms given to you by the culture, that is your other people around you, other people in your past, etc., other people in your community, and in, even when you're thinking verbally in your own mind, your inner monologue, I love that that's in the description of this, this event that we're doing here together, is that, you know, the, your inner conceptual verbal mind are in using words as only finally Wittgenstein kind of admitted in philosophy, you're using words that are public. Not, they're not somehow, you made them up out of yourself. You learn them and they are part of you. So your own inner voice is speaking with a culturally determined, uh, uh, maybe over-determined vocabulary. And so realistic speech means then speech that is beneficial, that produces understanding, produces freedom, not speech that produces domination, harm, aggression, and confirms delusion. So realistic, and then that's elaborated in all kinds of ways, but it's basically not creating disturbance between you and the others uh, through speech, which is your primary way of relating to others in a way, is speech. Then 